Hello, GBC family. It's your host, Ponto, speaking. I hope you're all doing well. So as we approach the end of our semester, some of you may be graduating and looking for jobs in your field soon. But obviously, landing a job can be a challenging process sometimes. So we wanted to take a look at one particular challenge uh, of the job search process that can cause some people a lot of stress. And that is, of course, interviews. So today I have with me Sangeeta Dixit uh, from GBC Career Services to tell us how to ace an interview. Hi, Sangeeta. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm good. I'm doing good. Thank you so much uh, for having me here today. Of course, we're very happy to have you here. So before we get into the interview, can you give a general overview of what Career Services helps students with uh, beyond the interview prep process? Sure, of course. Um, so Career Services is an amazing department with over nine career advisors. And we also have a few student staff members who uh, help us with reviews of resume and cover letters. So just to give you a summary of what we do is have coaching sessions as career advisors. We meet students and graduates also for um, a review on cover letter resumes, interview prep, of course, um, also in terms of career exploration. You know, I have students who, you know, uh, ask me, what do I do next? I am studying this. I have these many options or I have I don't see any option. What do I do? Or let's say an immigrant uh, student who is wondering what is the Canadian labor market like? What else can they do so that they have a better opportunity to, to land a job here. Uh, it also could be in terms of job search. Um, you know, there are various ways apart from LinkedIn. LinkedIn is, of course, a, a, a major source, a primary one, but there is also other strategy that, uh, you know, we can always talk about in terms of, uh, you know, whether it's just networking or, you know, having informational interviews. So there are those other uh, strategies that we do discuss. Um, in addition to that, we also facilitate workshops. Um, so this is only for students. We don't do it for graduates, but depending on what the faculty requests, we do have workshops on, you know, writing an effective re resume or acing an interview, could be networking or even future of work. Amazing. That's great. And I had a question as you were talking, you mentioned that you have student employees. So when would you go to an actual like advisor or when would you go to a student employee? Is there a difference between the services? Of course, yes. So within this, with the student uh, staff, it is largely for a drop-in support or a virtual uh, or rather just an online upload of your mm -hmm. resume and cover letter. So they are um, hired, trained and continuously mentored to ensure that the re resume review services are much faster and career advisors are still there in case, you know, they need further help. So let us say that there's a student who is transitioning from one industry into another, maybe a student and staff may not be able to answer all the questions. And that's when, you know, we can help with, with those. Or there's a student who had a career break and they're coming back to a career, a second career probably. So again, you know, career advisor would be the better option there. But if you need a, an immediate support with your resume um, or your cover letter, in, and let's say that you have a job application that ends tonight or maybe ends in two days and yeah. do not see any appointment, um, you know, for a career advisor, you could. But in terms of a career advisor itself, we would be a better fit for, um, you know, career exploration and career development, job search, networking strategies kind of areas. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So you have basically options all the time yeah, available yeah. to you, which is great. Perfect. So um, when it comes to interviews, uh, the first impression you make to a potential employer before you even actually open your mouth is and what you're wearing, I would assume. So right. um, what's your tip? How do you figure out what's uh, appropriate to wear? Perfect. Um, yeah, so I had a uh, couple of students in the last few months who asked me, why should I even dress up? Why should I spend that money, you know, to go <laughs> buy a great dress shirt or a, or a nice blazer or whatever, right? Yeah. So, so something that I would like to address here is that as human beings, uh, we are hardwired to go by the cues given by another human being. 
right? Um, and that's that's been there since the ancient times. Our ancestors used these cues to go, you know, to understand if the other person uh, was trustworthy, were they, you know, um, safe, could we collaborate with them? And that's the same instinct we still go by, even in the modern times. And that is where, you know, dressing up, uh, definitely has a lot of benefits in terms of, you know, showing that you are a trustworthy person, trustworthy in terms of representing their brand, right? And that's a major, major thing for any employer. And uh, so in order to do that, understanding the culture of the organization and uh, what could be the best attire is a great way to impress them. And also for you to feel great and confident when you walk into the interview room, uh, you know, especially in a, in a face-to-face interview, but even in a virtual call, you're still seen on, on video. So there are a couple of ways. One would be to do your research about the company um, while you're researching about what the company is about or, you know, what, what products do they sell? What services do they sell? It is also important for you as a, an applicant to understand what is the culture of the company and you know can you match it you know does do you vibe with it and that's also important so it's it's a two way street right a job search or an interview process is always a two two way street so um do your research on social media get on their linkedin you know if they have a tiktok page just look at how do these you know uh, people who represent the company how do they dress up and uh, the second way is to meet people who work in the company um you know it could be over a virtual call or it could be in person i've done both uh, i prefer the in person one just because you it's it's so much of a better you know understanding i feel in terms of just the body language uh, in addition to what people say but um for sure if you're comfortable with just a virtual call have those sessions in you know, just a 30 minute call with uh, someone who works there you know maybe meet a few people through linkedin you can send a message and meet them for a call with having a, a few questions about the company and include the attire the best way to dress up and uh, personally i uh, i feel that it is better to be overdressed <laughs> than to be a little you know to to not be and then you, know, you walk in there and you just see it's it's it, it comes from an experience that I had many years ago. So I, that's my own uh, opinion. But yeah, I mean, you could always just do those research and find out. Yeah, true. I agree, honestly. Maybe being overdressed is probably a little bit safer than just like risking it and bearing sure. something that you think is not the best. But yeah, as you were talking, I actually remembered a memory um, about like this person that they said like they had an interview and it was an online interview. So obviously like they were dressed up, like uh, they were wearing a nice shirt or whatever. Um, But apparently when you said like, it's very related to the culture of the company, like the way you dress, they really care about it because it has to match their culture. Uh, They apparently asked the person to stand up so they could see if they're not wearing shorts or anything. They want to make sure that this person is so serious enough and formal enough for them to not only wear like a nice shirt, but also be wearing yeah. proper like yeah. pants or something, which I found very interesting. But I would assume like if the company is like that, if like they are very serious and strict about what they're doing, um, makes sense. That is all. true. Absolutely. Um, for me, in, when I was hired for GBC, this was during the peak pandemic. <laughs> so of course, virtual <laughs> interview, uh, but I, I was still dressed up um, because I feel a lot more confident, especially in an interview where, mm-hmm. you know, meeting a panel of people and, you know, they're going to be throwing a bunch of questions at me. And what if they ask me to stand up, right? Um, it was just, uh, just yeah. better to be <laughs> overprepared. And I did see that it was a huge shift in my confidence because j- the way we look, the way we dress up definitely adds a lot more to our energy that we carry during the call or during the interview. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking about preparing for the interview, do you have any um, suggestions? Like, how do you predict the types of questions that the interviewer is going to ask you? Oh, for sure. So there are three P's that I always work with. That is prepare, practice, and perform. Looks like I'm going to be adding the fourth P from now on, which is predict, right? I mean, it is so important to, uh, (laughs) to understand what could be the possible questions in in the interview process. Um, Some of the most common interview styles, just to give a quick background, would be a personal interview, which means questions such as, tell me something about yourself. 
why would you want to work for this company or what motivated you to apply for this role are more about understanding who you are, what are your motivations, what are your values and belief systems. Um, The second style would be competency-based interview, which is thorough skill-based. So depending on what program you have studied, and what is the what are the technical skills, hard skills that you have learned, not just during the program, probably even before, you know, maybe, you know, you, you worked in a similar role where you use certain softwares, maybe a Microsoft Office 365, for example, right? Or maybe an Adobe Captivate or any of these hard skills that is key to performing at the job is going to be asked, right? So that needs a lot more understanding of the technical language and answering them in 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 the appropriate way. And the final styles would be behavioral slash situational interviews, which is more about soft skills, or I like to call it as essential skills, because Hard skills, yes, you know, you may have all the technical details or the skills that you you possess, but if there is no soft skills, if the attitude and the behavior does not translate, you know, during the interview or at work, nobody really would want to work with you. And that's a very hard fact. That's that's a truth, right? So they would want to know what is your predicted behavior in a certain situation. So they could throw questions such as, um, tell me about a time when you had a challenging manager or tell me something that's not great about your previous manager. And that's a tricky one to answer. Like, you know, are you going to be complaining <laughs> about them or you know, how do you answer yeah. them? And of course, you know, we do help them during the uh, you know, career advising session. So students can for sure make use of that opportunity to learn more. In the behavioral or the situational interview, there's no right or wrong answer. Um, it's more about understanding what kind of a person or personality do you bring into work. Um, So now having an understanding of these different interview styles can give you an understanding of where to look for the resources. There are various websites. I mean, of course, you know, you have LinkedIn where you could still look for questions that could come up. There's also glassdoor.com. I'm not sure how many of them use it, but it's a great space for an applicant to learn more about what kind of an interview process is it, what is the culture. So that's another space to do some research about the company. And um, one of the best ways to know more also is to reach out to people. Networking is a huge aspect of the Canadian labor market. It is great to know people, to have some sort of an understanding beforehand, right when you apply or right when you have an interview, you know, just kind of network with people and just understand what what is the possible interview rounds? What How, how was their experience? You know, what could you do better? Um, and just to give an example, I did the same thing when I applied for this role in GBC. Um, I reached out to two people and, you know, I had an understanding. None of them helped me with the interview questions, right? I mean, they don't do that, (laughs) but it's more about understanding, hey, this is the hiring manager who prefers asking standard questions, okay? Or this is the manager who prefers to ask skill-based questions, you know? So you get a better understanding of, uh, you know, the interview styles of each hiring manager also, because one size fits all kind of an approach, even for an interview does not really work. Each person is very different. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's something that I would definitely suggest. Yeah. And I think that's a very important point. Uh, The fact that you said like, there is no one size fits all anything technically. And I think the worst mistake that somebody can make is not really uh, researching the company, not knowing who the person is that they're talking to and not knowing what the company is about, which I know it's like, it sounds kind of weird, like who's not going to do that. But I know a lot of people that don't really do enough research and that really causes trouble for them. Absolutely. Thank you for bringing that point out. In fact, yeah, I mean, a thorough research about the company, about their value systems and their own mission and how do they function adds a lot more brownie points, you know. Um, so yeah, for sure, please do your research. <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, and that's that's going to help you, you know, predict and the, the rest of the three piece also come fall in place there. <laughs> for sure, yeah. Okay, so 
Now, my next question is, what are some of the ways you can prepare if the interview is on Zoom versus like in person? So technically online versus in person. For sure. Yeah. Uh, So that's a great question. Uh, In terms of virtual interviews, I would focus on three things. The first is the technical aspect, right? So ensure that you have a good Wi-Fi connection or a data connection, you know, maybe have a backup plan just in case um, the, you know, your modem shuts down, you know, just have a backup plan, maybe check with the college if there's a space where you could book a time, you know, book a room uh, just for an hour or whatever the duration is so that you could take the call. So that's one of them. The second also is check for the other things within the system. You know, is the laptop working well? Uh, You know, what about the camera and the microphone? Are they working well? Is the speaker, can you hear the person? So there are also those, these are very, you know, they, they may seem minor things, but they are so much more important because on the day, you know, you don't want things going haywire and then it just kind of hits you on your confidence level right so it's good yeah. to, to have some sort of a basic understanding of you know how the system is working on that particular day and um yeah also check for settings on your zoom or teams or whatever platform you're using in terms of is the camera so let's say that you have a an external camera connected to your laptop is the settings on Zoom also drawing the signal from the external camera or is it from the laptop itself or similarly with the microphone? That's so important because you don't want echoes. You don't want to have uh, disturbance during the call. Um, and of course, if you live in a shared space or you you just, you know, you have your background, which may have uh, certain things that you may not want to show, right? Or you just want some privacy. And, you know, you can always have a, a virtual background. Um, select something that is a little more pleasing on the eye because you don't want people to focus on a design that's behind you, right? <laughs> um, sometimes it happens when we have a, a team call, for example. Uh, you know, we have, we change, you know, uh, the, the, the background. And then, you know, one of them is commenting, oh, no, I see this cartoon behind you. We don't want that in an interview, <laughs> Uh, so just have something that's far more, you know, a, a planner or like, let, let's say an office setup or something, or maybe even just blur the background. That's totally okay, right? So that's with the technical aspect. Yeah. And the second is, of course, the attire. I think we already covered that part in terms of still dress up. I would always dress up fully. Like, you know, if I were to interview for another role, I would still dress up, you know, mm-hmm. uh, with, with a proper formal attire. And of course, uh, you know, take care of the background noise. A lot of us who live, you know, especially downtown or places where there's construction, um, there's a lot of noise when you speak. Yeah. And, you know, that's, it is a challenge. And that's where, you know, we need to figure out, okay, what is the alternate, right? Maybe ask ask a library, you know, is, is, if the library allows it or maybe within the college. Um, so that's something you could figure out. And the third is a body language, which is so important. Uh, both in virtual and in in person, but in terms of the body language on on a virtual call, it is, you know, you don't see the whole, you know, gesture and it's just your face. It's just maybe a little bit of your arms if you are using your hand gestures, but largely it's just your face and, you know, just take care that you're looking into the camera when when you speak. Um, That way it looks like you're maintaining an eye contact with the the interviewer or interviewers. Um, And of course, you know, uh, just still have a smile, you know, uh, just be natural as as you would talk to another person in an interview session or maybe even just having a conversation in a professional setup. Your voice definitely shows a lot of enthusiasm and you know when you smile it's it is seen so um let's just make it easy for the both of us right uh, in an interview <laughs> uh, to have that uh, you know to have those few things you know considered now i'm moving to the in person right in terms of planning your journey and arrival. That is so important. I think after the pandemic, a lot of us may have also <laughs> forgotten in terms of, hey, how do I get there? What exactly. are the closures? How do I want to get there? What if there's a de- delay in the TTC, right? So it's good to get to have an understanding. So of course, please do plan out, you know, arriving at least 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes in advance. You don't have to immediately walk into the interview room. Um, you know, you just get, get a chance to maybe, you know, just freshen up, Relax, take a few calming breaths, 
take a sip of water, just kind of prepare yourself for the interview. So that's something that will really help you calm your nerves also. Um, in case you're going to be delayed. So let's say that the TTC shut down for whatever reason, it's not in your control. Please inform the person, you know, just put a message on, or an email to them. Um, I understand that in the TTC, many of us do not get a signal, but it is still at least good to, you know, send it across, let it be in the outbox. And whenever you get a signal, it, it's sent to them. And the moment you get a signal or you get out of the TTC, please give a call. I know this student who lost a great opportunity to work in the city of Toronto because of this one mistake of not yeah. informing that they were going to be late, right? And that was, that was such a, uh, you know, uh, a sad thing for the student and they, yeah. they still regret it. So that's the part of, you know, planning your journey and arrival. And of mm -hmm. course, your attire, very important, still dress up, please. Um, in this, I would also like to include perfumes. So just please be mindful that there are people who are quite allergic to a lot of perfume and a lot of smell. So yeah. um, just take care that you you do wear clean clothes, of course, very important, and <laughs> don't necessarily have to wear a perfume um, only because we don't want to trigger someone's allergies and, uh, you know, just make it, uh, make it uncomfortable for someone else. So just please take care of that. Um, and of course, you know, keep at least two hard copies of your resume. You can always check with the recruiter um, or the hiring manager if they need it, right? Um, I always carry it regardless, right? I mean, it's good to go over prepared again. I always go by that standard of having those one or two copies of my resume that I sent out to this particular employer, um, also a notepad and a pen. Most of my interviews, you know, people have been so impressed when they see that I'm actually taking down notes when they say stuff, right? So I just let them know. I would, in fact, suggest to you all as, you know, job seekers, just give a request saying that, is it okay if I write down a few notes as you share, right? Maybe they're talking about the salary. Maybe they're talking about the work culture, the team culture, the day-to-day -day aspects of what entitles in the job. and you're able to have something for reference and it shows that you're you're taking it seriously, right? Yeah. And the final bigger part is also the body language. Here, you're, you are seeing the whole entire you, you know, the way you sit, the way your gestures are, uh, everything is, you know, is seen by people. And again, please remember human beings are very, not just human beings, it's a lot of mammals also, but focusing on, <laughs> beings we are hardwired to go by those nonverbal cues we go by you know those energies that's constantly being whether we like it or not <laughs> right it's always being uh kind of, you know, the transaction is always on so please take care of your gestures right use some sort of a ha uh, hand gesture as you speak let it be natural i'm not asking you to perform an act there but it's not just what you say it's how you say it that matters the most. You may be talking the best of the best skill sets that you have, but if there is no voice modulation or there is no gestures, you know, you don't show that passion in what you wish to do, that's going to be really yeah. tough to convince someone. So yeah, take care of that, practice that. Um, what I did was um, just to kind of quickly add on is have my phone on video practice it by myself you know just kind of have a mock interview session uh, <laughs> to kind of read my own body language read the content that I speak and kind of give a feedback so that really helped in, in boosting my confidence and uh, to just kind of understand what can I do better right during an interview so that's something that I always suggest even to my students during my coaching sessions. Oh, wow. These were a lot of very, very great practical tips. So thank you so much for sharing those. Um, but just to add on to one of the points, actually going back to the virtual interviews that we were talking to, I think one thing that I have had experience with personally is that lighting is very important. And I was talking to one of my colleagues at GBC, actually, and they were saying that they once were interviewing the student and um, they were completely just seeing a silhouette of the person just because the window was behind the person. Mm -hmm. So it was just like a black suit they couldn't see any of their face features and anything and so they asked them like do you mind just um moving like the camera or something and they said no for some reason i don't know why um they probably couldn't but just make sure that before you are starting to have the conversation and interview with someone 
you've made sure that there is good lighting in the room, or at least you're not like um, sitting right in front of the window, because that could really make it bad for the person who is uh, interviewing you, because they don't want to see how you are expressing yourself and how you're talking to them. Absolutely. Thank you so much for bringing that out. I mean, I have a ring light, you know, all the time when I speak and, you know, uh, but thank you. That, that's a very important thing in terms of being seen. Uh, <laughs> really, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's so much more important. And I also just remember this one other thing is please keep your phones turned off. Like let it oh, be yeah. totally turned <laughs> off uh, or kept away. Um, not even on vibrate mode because you don't want the you know phone buzzing and yeah. your, um, uh, you know, your attention just kind of diverts. So uh, that's important also. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, for sure. Thank you for mentioning that. Okay, so moving on to like the stress we feel, obviously, a lot of us feel anxious when we are having an interview with someone and it can really get in the way of coming up with great answers on the spot. So what are some tips and tricks that you can give us to beat the anxiety in the interview and do a great job? Mm-hmm. For sure. So I think, you know, it's it's important for us to understand that all emotions are valid, right? Many times we tend to fight those emotions and, you know, we just think that, you know, let's just be in denial or let's just close our eyes out and the emotion just switches off. That's not how we deal with it effectively because that's going to backfire a lot, you know, in a bigger (laughs) way than than, uh, actually accepting it and dealing with it in in a different manner. So allow your emotions, you know, to roll out instead of fighting them. That's something that I would put it as the first step to handling any of these emotions, right? And um, each time you become aware of how you feel, you know, such intense emotions, take a few mindful deep breaths, right? It is okay to take a few extra seconds before you answer a question. There is no hard and fast rule that the moment the interviewer finishes the you know, question, like they end the sentence that you have to jump in with an answer. Sometimes, you know, we do want to because we are in that cut of impressing our interviewer, but uh, it need not be the same way, right? Yeah. You know, maybe a moment just to kind of take a deep breath. You could always do that, right? Also keep a bottle of water with you. It may be among certain employers seen as a sign of lack of confidence because you're constantly sipping water. Um, just be a little mindful that you're not doing that too much also, right? It's, it's It needs a final balance, but it's good to have it because when you when you feel that anxiety is just getting too much, too high, at least a, a few sip of wa- sips of water, a few deep breaths, take a moment and then recollect your thoughts and start to answer. So that's something that's is a foundation, I would say, to um, handling those emotions during the interview. Um, and also, you know, I have suggested this in the past to a lot of my students, even in my previous role. So I worked in a, you know, not for profit and helped a lot of you know, job seekers um, with very similar kind of situations and something that uh, many, many students, even in GBC have given a feedback to me is keeping something that is of comfort around them or close to them, you know? Um, So let's say in a virtual interview, uh, it may be a little easier. So let's say you want to stick a photo of your loved one or a pet, right? Just to kind of bring in that comfort. Um, Or maybe I had this one client in my previous role in the other company that I worked with who had this pillow. So they they, they wanted to have that pillow on their lap when they were answering uh, interviews and um, they they found that it helped them, right? So that could be another strategy to help you calm your nerves. And, or if it's an in, in person, I mean, you can't carry a pillow there, you can't have your teddy bear or whatever, right? I mean, um, so what do you do then is to probably look for anchoring those emotions to something else, maybe a pen, right? Or maybe, um, you know, something that's in your pocket, maybe, right? Or you're just, you know, holding on to something in your hand, maybe a folder could be, right? So it's just about also anchoring your thoughts to an object or maybe even let's say uh, an accessory that could help you calm down during those you know intense emotions can definitely help you during the interview process and um, also please prepare right that's so important i mean no matter how many you may know everything about yourself or you may know you know whatever you have studied or your skill sets 
each interview that you attend. And it, I understand this as a job seeker. I have gone through the process. And I'm sure all of us have here, you know, who have who today have jobs. And we have all been in that situation where we were once job seekers and, you know, maybe trying to get the first uh, first big break in Canada or maybe just, you know, graduate and just get, get that uh, dream role. But having interviewed for so long, there are times when you just feel, oh, my God, you know what? I already know what I want to say. I don't want to prepare <laughs> anymore. I'm just so tired. It's a very valid emotion. But it's, it's important to know that it is still good to prepare. It's still good to have a brush up of how do you want to channel those emotions and be prepared with answers about the company, about the role. You know, if you have a few things that you would want to know from them. So just that preparation definitely also helps you with coming your notes on the day. And I would also suggest, and this is my personal opinion, it could be a lot of other opinions from other people, but I personally stay away from caffeine <laughs> before, <laughs> before an interview. Um, you know, uh, a lot of them, I know they love to have their coffee in the morning or, you know, just before the interview because you, you get that pep up of your energy. But at the same time, there may be situations where, you know, your heart, the, the palpitations might be a little higher because of the caffeine in your body. And that could have, have an, a negative effect. So just take care. As long as you are totally aware that caffeine does not do those <laughs> things to you, it's okay. But otherwise, you know, just have a cup, a sip of water and just also eat something that's easier on the stomach, right? So that's also important. These things are so important because you don't want to be sitting there and having this nervous belly and then you need to, you have other things going wrong. So yeah. yeah, and just please be aware of what is that you would want it to say during the interview and how do you want to say it? So yeah, I think these things are sufficient as of now, but as career advisors, we totally understand that each student and each human being responds to these situations in a very different manner, right? And um, and that's where having those one-on-one -on -one conversations with a career advisor hopefully can help you understand what is the best way for you right? That's going to help you out. You know, what works for me may not work for you. So we need to figure out. So we can always do that during a career coaching session. Yeah, of course. And just to add on to your point about like preparing and practicing, I think another way to practice besides, of course, coming to the career uh, services and having a mock interview with one of the mm -hmm. advisors, I think it would be actually just trying when you're still at school. Like a lot of people mm -hmm. start practicing for interviews when they graduate and as they like starting to actually apply for right. jobs. But for me personally, I think I've had so many interviews for like different jobs I had on campus or during my student years that I'm not scared of anything anymore. Like the only thing I'm preparing for is actually just like understanding the company and all that and not really the anxiety. Like that doesn't really bother me anymore because I've done it so many times. So I would definitely suggest that to students, even if you don't think like you love the job, maybe just do it for, you know, trying to have an interview and seeing that process. No, that's that's a great point. Honestly, um, I have a few students who do approach me way before they graduate and they're like, Sangeeta, mm -hmm. I want to start preparing my resume. I want to do this. You know, can I? So they they already block my calendar. There are, I'm sure my colleagues have a very similar situation happening with some students. And it's very impressive. Honestly, I have hired in the past. So I have been at a place for hiring manager and Mm -hmm. Just to see the the proactiveness of a student, you know, to be prepared way before anyone else is even starting to get into the resume building and they're already preparing for an interview. They have a few rounds of mock interviews. They sit with their classmates or maybe they have these sessions with a career coach preparing for those interviews for, you know, to have a few samples of resumes and cover letter to just see what works and what doesn't work. These are the students who, you know, in many ways beat the competition. And that's sure. that's so important. So thank you so much for bringing that point out. That's that's really important to do. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Always being ahead of the curve. I think it has always worked for okay. everyone. So try it for sure. <laughs> Amazing. And just speaking of being ahead of the curve and like preparing for interviews, usually at the end of an interview, the employer asks like if you have any questions for them. And um I know some people like get stressed. I personally have been in that situation. I was like, oh my God, I think I have to ask something that I didn't know what to ask. So what are some useful questions that you think uh, people could ask at this position? 
For sure. I mean, this is such a great opportunity for an applicant to learn more about the role, maybe about the company, and also to determine if you want to work there, right? And that's what I was sharing earlier, that a job interview and this entire process is not a one-way street. It is a two-way street. It's it's not just the employer looking at, are you the right fit? It's you as an applicant also determining if this is the place you want to work in, is this the team that you want to work with? You know, does it gel well with you or not, right? So in a way, you're showing that you are serious about the, the job that you have applied for or you're interviewing for. Um, some of the great questions that you could probably include is, um, what, is a, what does a typical day look like in this role, right? Mm-hmm. What are the job growth and learning opportunities that this employer gives us? Right. Yeah. So, so that in a way you're saying that, hey, I am planning to stick here for a longer time. Yeah. I am also ambitious. Uh, you know, I would I don't want to just be this for the next 10, 15 years. I mean, if you choose that, that's fine. No judgment there. But if you are someone who, you know, who is ambitious and you want to show that you you want to grow within the company or within the industry, it's great for you to know what are the learning opportunities and the growth opportunities this employer provides, right? And it could also be the question of, you know, how is the team dynamic? Yeah. I mean, there are places where, oh, we would like to you know, know each and every process that the team member does. So that probably could say, maybe we micromanage, right? They may not use the word there. Or maybe they say, oh, we give all the independence to our team members and As in when they require help, we are there to support. So that kind of gives you an understanding. So it's important to know the team dynamics. Um, What is the management style like, right? So you could, these are some of the basic questions um, that you could ask, but these are important questions for you to know. So it's basic, but it's important. Um, But during an interview itself, maybe they say certain things, they share certain information, which triggers some questions within you please ask them, right? Um, it's, it's important to know, to get clarity so that you, you can make the right decision for yourself also, especially when you, let's say you have multiple job offers, you have these two or three offers and you're figuring out, okay, all of them are very similar in terms of pay range and maybe certain other aspects, but what is it that is going to be the deal breaker for one employer? So that's where, you know, it's, it's important to get the clarity. But here is a word of caution. While you may want to you know, impress the employer, you want to uh, also show that you're very enthusiastic about this job and you know, you're serious about it. You, you know, there are situations where the, the applicant may tend to ask too many questions, right? And it kind of looks yeah. like you are now interviewing the interviewer. <laughs> um, we may have those questions and those, are, those may be valid, but just please remember that I think, you know, this question of do you have any questions for us usually comes, say, about five to eight minutes just before the end of the session um, or the interview. Um, So just pick some of the most important questions that you want to know right then and there. So those are the key questions that you want to focus on. And you will always have an opportunity to email a few more questions if you wish to know more. But um, so that discretion and ability to make the decision of what is the most important question that I would like to know right now uh, is something that you will have to go based on each interview. But please do ask those questions. Uh, you know, uh, it's a it's a great way to also impress your employers. Yeah, and try to be natural. I would say, like, don't ask a question that has a very obvious answer. So, because like the employer obviously would know that you know the answer too, and it would just be like, okay, this person was just trying to ask a question. Mm-hmm. So that's why I prepare so you know that the question is making sense and it's uh, a natural conversation, not really Always. fake. <laughs> Always, yeah. Okay, so talking about thank you emails, yes or no, should we do them? Always, yes, a big yes. <laughs> but here's the thing, right? Uh, it's not just about, hey, thank you for the interview, yada, yada, yada. It's not just that, right? It's more mm-hmm. about, because I'm sure hiring managers get that all the time. I'm sure mm-hmm. that this, they're going to be receiving from most of the candidates. And I'm assuming that most of them send it, but there are also situations where many of them do not know that they can send a thank you email. Um, So a genuine thank you email is the most important thing. And how do you differentiate between just a thank you email versus a genuine one? 
It is where you include certain key components that were discussed during the interview, something that you really liked, right? Maybe uh, the interview style itself, right? You really enjoyed the way they interviewed you, right? Or maybe you enjoyed listening to the work culture, the team dynamics, could be any of these things, including a few of those key pointers in the thank you email shows that you're not just sending out a generic, you know, copy paste from Google kind of yeah. a, a thank you email. It's more about you really listened to them. You really yeah. paid attention and you are looking at those key points, which is, you know, which means you're considering those things for your own decision making to whether to join the company or not. So that is something that that can make a huge difference in the way an, a, a, an interviewer or a hiring manager looks at you as a candidate. Yeah. Um, it's it's also great etiquette, right? It's 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 keeping it professional. They also took the time out of their busy schedule to ask those questions to learn more about you. You know, among maybe a hundred applicants, you know, you were in those top ten or top five. And that means that's a great thing that, you know, they saw something in you that they wanted to know more about you. So it's a way to also appreciate that uh, effort and that part of uh, a hiring team. Um, and also just ensure that you send it within the first 24 hours, right? The thank you email. I mean, yeah. please don't wait until, oh, I'm going to send it later on. And then you forget. And the hiring manager for sure will forget because they have a lot of you know applicants for various positions that they are hiring for. They may not even remember. So you want to make that mark right then and there. So 24 hours is a stretch. For me, I would probably keep it like within the first four hours. Um, I usually do it within the first two two hours, you know, just so that it's it's not too soon also, but at the same time, yeah. it's not, you know, I don't forget it. I, I just want to establish my uh, presence there. So that is just a suggestion, but please do send that within the first 24 hours in case if it's the end of the day or whatever, and, you know, you just want to send it the next day. Um, in the thank you email, alongside uh, aspects that were discussed during the interview, you could also kind of remind them about your certain key competencies that you have saying, hey, you know, just to kind of give you a recoup of what we were talking about, you know, I have these skills, I bring in such great passion. And again, be specific. Right now, I'm putting out a very generic statement here, but um, please be specific of one or two key components that you want to add about yourself. It's a way, again, of establishing that bond and kind of helping them recollect the discussion. Of course, they have their notes, but maybe they left out one or two points and, you know, your email has that. And, you know, they're like, hey, you know what? That's a great thing. You know, I completely forgot to include in my notes. And that's that's a way for you to establish something that hopefully is a positive outcome for you and for them, right? And of course, keep an, uh, you know, a window open for the interviewer to contact you if they have any questions. I have had the situation where after the interview process itself, um, I think after two days, they contacted me for just one one more clarification. And they were like, hey, we forgot to ask you this. You know, we just wanted to know. Mm -hmm. um, it's great, you know, to give them an opportunity to call, contact you again. Um, so, yes, a big yes again. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And I think um, just to show like you were talking about how to like you have to show that you were listening to them and you were involved in the conversation. One thing that I actually really think is helpful and I suggest to anyone who has an interview is that if you want to show that you listen to them, maybe at the end of the email, just something very short. If you discuss something specifically, for example, you discussed, for example, as a designer for me, um, a program that was interesting. Mm -hmm. You can probably find something, a piece of news or something about it online and just provide a link for them. Be like, oh, by the way, we discussed about this and I thought this would be interesting for you as well. So here's a link. So this way they know that you're actually like interested in having a connection with them and you're involved. Oh, yes. Moving on to my last question, how can students get in touch with career services for more help? Oh, yes, sure. Um, so there are three ways to get support from us. The first is we offer a 15 minute drop in support for resume and cover letter review. This is for the summer term alone. It's just between Mondays 
to Thursdays. Um, Fridays, we do not work in, in the office. The schedules will change during the fall and the winter semester. So between 9.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. at Casaloma and Waterfront Campus as of now. But during the fall, St. James will open and we'll have a space of our own and students can meet us there for a drop-in session. Um, alternatively, students can also upload their resume and cover letter um, just to access other resources under the My Career platform. It's a, it's a platform that we launched in November 2022, and uh, many, many students have already taken advantage of this. We see a huge influx of resumes and cover letters being uploaded on an everyday basis. Um, all you have to do is just do a keyword search on GVC website to uh, to get the link and type in my career in the search box and you will be taken to the page and you can just use that tool as well. And the final one, of course, is the career advising appointments, which is virtual as of now. Um, it is for 45 minutes with one of us. And we can be booked through GB Careers. Um, and, you know, once you log into GB Careers, you have to go under career services and then you would be able to book an appointment. Amazing. Thank you so much, Sangeeta, for coming to our podcast today. This was actually one of my favorite episodes. I think I learned so much. So I really loved having a conversation with you. And I personally think interview is a very, very important portion of the job seeking process and often a deal breaker for many of the employers. Uh, that's how they decide whether a person fits the culture of their company and if that person is like someone who is easy to work with or not. So hopefully everybody has learned a few things from our conversation. And thanks again, Singita, and everyone else for listening to us today. And see you all next week. Thank you.